Hey, everybody. Welcome to Adoption Now, your adoption show. I'm your host, April Fallon. Here at Adoption Now, we tell adoption stories from the perspective of the adoptive parents, adoptee, and birth parents. As most of you know, I am the adoptive mother of four beautiful children, and my husband and I are passionate about supporting you and your journey no matter where you are in the process or what role you play in the triad. We see you and we hear you. Today, we're super excited. We had this amazing opportunity to have a very special guest on today when we were contacted and told that the Kendricks Brothers and Kirk Cameron Entertainment, also Fathom Events, were announcing the release of their latest film, an adoption film, yay, called Life Mark. We had no idea how deeply it would impact us. Take a listen. From the Kendrick Brothers, creators of War Room and Fireproof comes Life Mark. Always wondered if my biological parents think about me. Inspired by a true story. Imagine how scared she must have been. And then the decision to place you for adoption. Is that your birth mom? She wants to meet. Really? Yeah. She loved you. And I'm so glad that she made the choice that she did. Life Mark. Starring Kirk Cameron and Alex Kendrick. Rated PG-13. Some material may be inappropriate for children under 13. Only in theaters beginning September 9th. For tickets, go to lifemarkmovie.com. Today we have attorney David Scotton joining us. He is the adoptee who wrote the movie and who this movie is about. David, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. So everybody's going to want to know, are you an adoption attorney? Uh, I actually was able to do my first adoption earlier this year. Um, And I did a second one a few weeks ago. Uh, (laughs) That's awesome. It it was full circle for me. I mean, to be able to be there and facilitate that moment for these beautiful families, it was really touching. That is amazing. Okay, so we got to pre-screen the movie, and I really didn't know what to expect. You don't know what perspective is going to be brought out. And we, well, my husband and I cried the whole time. And I love how you're bringing out the three perspectives that we bring out here, right? The adoptee, birth parents, and adoptive parents. Tell us why you wrote this movie. Well, first off, I love that you use the word adoption triad because I not many people use that. And that's exactly what this movie does is show the perspectives of adoption from all three perspectives, from the adoptee perspective, from the birth parents perspective and the adoptive parents perspective. And that's what we did. And I lived in Parker Avenue when we showed the first time meeting when my family and I got to thank and meet my birth parents for the first time and say, thank you for choosing adoption. We love you for your decision. So when Kirk and the Kendricks, you know, called me and, and uh, started to make this movie, um, I didn't technically write the movie, but they consulted me, you know, every step of the way. And they really wanted to make it as true as possible. And they really did. You know, there's, there's a lot of movies that say inspired by a true story. Uh, this one really is inspired by a true story. Uh, and it's, it's just surreal every time I get to watch it. So just to be a part of this, um, this story, to be a part of this movement, um, we are just so excited just to be a part of it. You know, I love that you say movement because that is so true. In past years, we haven't really talked about all three people that have to make an adoption happen, right? You have to have a baby or a child, you have to have the birth parents, and you have to have somebody that's going to be adopting. And we've only focused on one part. And now in this movie, you bring out so many aspects. I have had people, because I'm in all these adoption forums, and they've asked questions about your movie. And one of the biggest questions is, did your birth parents and adoptive parents have a say in how it was written? Oh, in terms of life, Mark? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, My parents were consulted too. Um, My birth parents as well. Um, And look, I I can tell you, everyone is is happy with with the product. I mean, everyone feels honored and um, just excited to be a part of it. Yeah. When I was watching it, there were lines that everyone said that I hear every day in this podcast, in, in my life, right. In the adoption community, I hear, um, you know, I hear birth parents say, maybe he's going to hate me. Maybe the child I place is going to hate me. I don't know. I'm too scared to reach out. What's going to happen. I have heard, um, adoptive mothers say, I don't know if I can say yes to this because I don't know if I can take one more loss. I don't know if my heart can do it. I mean, there are just so many key things. And the friend that you have in this, this hilarious friend that says, yeah. do you want people to know you're adopted? You know, just yeah. that stigma. I mean, your life 
is just exactly what people can connect to. And I just want to ask you, you were adopted. Were you always preparing to meet your birth family? Oh, no, not at all. Uh, growing up, you know, I, we, we celebrated um, the fact that I was adopted. You know, we had adoption day every year. It was like a second birthday for me. And so we celebrated it in the house, but I never really wanted to share it with uh, with my, my, my friends outside of the house, as was portrayed in the movie. Right. Um, it just made me feel different, made me feel like I didn't fit in. Um, and so I never really wondered who my birth parents were. I mean, I would every now and then, but it was never a thought that was just constantly there. And it was never more than a passing thought. Um, and I would seem to think of them at the most like personal, intimate moments with my family. Like, you know, we'd be on vacation and and then I think I just randomly think I, I, I wonder who they are. Mm-hmm. But it was never more than that. And I remember I asked for a picture when I was about eight years old and my dad showed me a picture, which is also in the movie. And um, after that, I was like, they, they look like nice people. And it wasn't until I was 18 that I that uh, we got a phone call from the law firm that facilitated my adoption, saying that my birth mother was interested in an update if we were interested. And that's when I wrote a letter and, and said, hey, you know, if, if you have Facebook, um, you can have me on Facebook. And and sure enough, she did. And then we started talking and. I never had talked to her on the phone. I didn't, I, I never had anything other than written Facebook communication before we met for the first time. So meeting them was never really a plan of mine. I mean, it, it just kind of happened. And I'm glad it did, to say the least. Were you scared? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you see how awkward I was. You, you can watch I Live the Parker Avenue and also Life Mark, and you see how um, it, it, it was just a lot of emotion going on where you feel scared you're questioning whether you're making the right decision because you don't want you don't want your sorry my phone's going off you don't want um your parents to feel replaced and so there's a lot of emotions going on and the fact that my parents are so supportive of it i think really helped me um feel comfortable doing that and and helped me really make the final decision to go meet them um i was scared to say the least i mean i it's just like the total uncertainty as to who they are um as to honestly what they want, you know, it's, you, you don't know these people and, and you're going up and you just, you know, trusting God that, that this is, this is part of my calling. And I'm just glad that we went up there. Well, I just want to say that your adoptive parents are amazing. And that's the kind of adoptive mom I want to be where I am prepared for this. I'm okay. Right. I have four children. I know I'm their mom. I know they love me, but let's go on an adventure together. And I think sometimes a lot of adoptees have to go uh, alone because the parents feel upset or they feel betrayed or they feel hurt. And we're kind of moving into this whole other world where we have open adoption and, you know, we're recognizing that this is more than just a baby and an adoption. This is a whole story, right? And you can be a part of the whole story. And I love that in the movie, they did that with you. They went with you. They wanted to be a part of it. They wanted to thank her themselves, right? I mean, that right. is just such an amazing journey. I think they were. I think they were more excited than I was. Yeah. I mean, to them, you know, Melissa and Brian allowed them to have a family, and I'm, I'm their only child. So to them, it was a big moment just to say thank you. Yeah, and I think that the way that there was also pain in the mix of it, you know. Some people think that we love to tell stories that are just happy. And of course, happy stories are great, but no adoption story is 100% happy. There's always this grief. And the the adoptive father, Kurt Cameron, says this in the movie. He says, in adoption, I'm going to get the exact, he said, the grief that surrounds adoption is great. And when we can start from that place is when we're approaching it in an honest and real way. And then you can build from there. There can be great, happy moments. There can be hard conversations. And that's what I love is that you're laughing and you're crying in this movie. I mean, when you watch it, are you just so proud of the way that they portrayed your story? Oh, yeah. It's every time I've now seen it 11 times Um, (laughs) and uh, even saw a few different drafts for the final cut. Every time I noticed something different. Um, And every time I still tear up at the same scenes Um, and it's just surreal to see, to see our story being used to affect others. You know, just this past Tuesday on a Tuesday night, the theater was packed on a Tuesday and I'm sitting there and uh, I'm just hearing 
all these people crying and I'm just, it, it just, it's just like, wow. Like, like saying yes to this um, and seeing how God is using the story. I mean, just, just being there and realizing that people are, are being impacted by this story and by this movie in ways we never could have imagined. Um, and it's just touching to be a part of it. It's really amazing. You said the thing that got me the most is because my first child adopted is a son and we are very, very close. And I love this boy. And when you said, I'm not your biological son, and sometimes that bothers me, I was like, just so emotionally connected to that. Talk to us about that. Yeah, um, that was so that happened. And that, that was that really happened in real life. Um, that's why I really liked it to put it in the movie. Um, before I went to meet my birth parents, and this is shown in the documentary, I lived in Parker Avenue. Um, I wanted to just kind of reaffirm my family and my best friends that like, you know, they're who they are. And, and, and me going to uh, Indiana is not going to change that. I'm not going to search for new parents. I'm mm-hmm. not going to search for my real parents. Mm-hmm. Um, and to be able to just tell them in writing, that's how I best express myself, uh, just was important to me. And that was a part of a journey. So I'm glad it was filmed. Um, and I, I just remember that was, that's, that's one of the scenes that I, that I still tear up on Mm -hmm. because it was so emotional just to be there and put such, um, honest thoughts into writing for people to see. I mean, it's, uh, that was just a very emotional moment for me. Um, and I knew my parents felt that way, but for me, it was just important to, to tell them that before I went, went and did this journey. Why did you feel that it bothered you? Did being adopted bother you? Uh, growing up, not the fact that I was adopted, but the fact that others had their preconceived notions about adoption mm-hmm. really affected me in, in many ways. Um, I remember when I was in elementary school, you know, I, I didn't want people to know, but my mom was so proud of it. She was telling <laughs> all the parents and then they go tell their kids. So people found out that I was adopted. And um, one girl found out and I, I just remember it so distinctly. And I, I don't remember too much from back then, but I remember this. Um, we were on this playground or whatever, and, and, and this girl found out that I was adopted and she screams out in front of everyone. So you're an orphan. Oh. And I, I, I'll never forget that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it wasn't the fact that she called me an orphan. It was the fact that she just didn't understand adoption. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was so common for me. I mean, people would, people still ask me, uh, what's it like to meet your real mom? What's it like to meet your real dad? And I had to tell them that's, I, I don't know, because I've always known my real dad and my real mom, who right. I met was my biological mother, and my biological father. And that's that's an important and, and, and big distinction that people need to know um, through the adoption option. Mm-hmm. Yes, real. Right. We always try to say, OK, well, let's not use real. Let's use biological. <laughs> but when you met them, did you have a connection to them? I mean, obviously, you know, you know they're your biological family, but was there something like with DNA that you were like, Oh my gosh, I love that too. Or there's just like a DNA connection. Uh, honestly, no, uh, <laughs> maybe I, I think I, maybe I have to think about that one a little more. Um, I mean, Melissa Cooley has more of a, like a adrenaline side. I mean, she wanted to meet me and, and go skydiving, right. which actually happened. Um, really on that first trip. Yeah. On the first trip. Oh that my gosh. Happened. You guys um, jumped into it, they, literally. Yeah, they, yeah, <laughs> they put it in the movie. Um, so I, I think, you know, my birth father is much more reserved. Um, my birth mother, not so much. Uh, and I'm kind of both. And I don't know if maybe maybe that is the, the DNA connection. I don't know. I mean, the environment plays such a huge part. Um, but maybe that maybe that's what it is. And today, what is your relationship like with them? Yeah. So we keep in touch, you know, so we got to go up there. Um, we spent a week in Indiana, maybe a little less than a week. And I uh, got to see what their lives were like. And then my birth mother came here to New Orleans and her family got to see what our lives were like. And so we went fishing with them down here and showed them New Orleans. And um, we kept in touch by, you know, Facebook and texting. And um, we've actually seen each other a good bit. I mean, we actually speak together sometimes too, which is oh, really wow. powerful to have both my birth mother and myself speak together on our story so that we've done that uh, numerous times. Well, you'll have to come back on with her. We'd love to hear her, her side. We love our birth mothers that come and talk about 
the hard choice it was to place. And I love that part of the movie too, is that you're bringing out, it's very hard. There is a woman that has carried a child that is going to leave the hospital with no child and putting yourself into that place can change how you feel about her, how you feel about adoption. It gives you great empathy and you just show that. I mean, for us, we're just so excited that everything we do here is like, oh, it's on the big screen. This is what yeah. we live for. This is what we've been working towards is bringing this community together. Now, tell me what you want people to take away from your movie. I hope they'll go and and be immersed in this message of adoption. I hope that they'll go and learn about adoption and, and see the perspective from all three sides of the adoption triad and ultimately realize that that I'm here today because I, I lived on Parker Avenue and I lived on Parker Avenue because my birth mother left an abortion clinic and chose adoption. Mm-hmm. And adoption allowed me to live and allowed my family to have a family. So that's the power of adoption. That's the beauty of adoption. And I hope that people can see this movie and, and use it as a resource to talk about adoption because I think that's a, that's what we're missing a lot of is some avenue to share the realities of adoption. And now we have it not in, not only in documentary form, but but also in movie form. Um, so I think people will be touched when they go see it and um, they'll just feel love after they leave the theater. And I think that ultimately, that's really what it's about is being loving. I have become a more loving person. I went into it thinking about the baby and then I learned to love birth mothers. I learned to love the story. I learned to love the journey. I learned to love the questions. At first, the questions that came, I was terrified because you don't want to hurt your child. I mean, when you said, I want to be your biological son, that's how my son is too. Like when he realized, wait, and my son is African-American, which is even funnier. He's like, I wasn't in your tummy. I'm like, no, (laughs) no. But you were in my heart. I mean, I love you as if you were in my tummy, as if I was your biological mom, right? I'm so passionate about that. And I just, I think the movie encompasses that. And I love the way it's written. I love your funny friend. And I love that you're open about how you felt as a child. Because my heart, David, is that we don't make adoption a disease anymore. Where somebody says, oh, you're adopted. Oh, like... You have some, like when the girl yelled out, you're an orphan, that that is just something that's so strange and foreign. I mean, adoptions are happening so much. So many adoptions, right? We've got 1.2 million families waiting on lists for babies. Infertility is high. And so adoption is becoming the norm. How do we train people how to use words around it? How do we help people understand the complexity of it? And how do I make it a little bit normal, just a part of your journey. Like, yes, I'm adopted. And then people are interested and they, they ask the right questions, right. To make a child feel comfortable and okay with their story. And that starts with us. That starts with talking about it early. And it sounds like your parents did that way before it was even a thing. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. My mom would read adoption books as when I was a baby. And she was just prepared for the journey. And, you know, she was willing to share you with the world. And that's something that is hard as a protective mother, but she was willing to do it. And I love that. I also love one last thing. My favorite thing is the connection when your birth mother was trying to choose and I won't give it away, but when she was trying to choose Uh who was going to be the adoptive mother. And I hear that all the time. I tell families, don't put fake things in your book or it's going to be the one thing that's important to her. And the connection that you have based on that can be really strong. And I mean, it was just, it was funny. I'm not going to say what it is, but it was really funny what what actually connected them and why why she chose. You know, people family. laugh at it. I'm not sure if they if they think it's like just funny or if they think it's like actually happened, but that that actually happened. Those were actually her questions. Oh, I've had, I had a lady just come on and she said that, um, the the birth parent chose her because of her pantry. She saw a picture of her pantry and it was organized and she wanted an organized pantry and she was the mom. I mean, you can't even guess what it would be that would connect them. But that's what I love. These little parts of the movie that you know, these people have walked through it. You know, they understand and you know, this is an important message, not only for the adoption community, but what God is doing. God is doing something amazing in adoption. God is speaking 
the heart of all three people in the triad. And God is pushing this message forward. We're just combining together and helping it go forward for healthy adoptions. And I just, I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you sharing your story. And I hope you'll come back with your birth mom. You can come back with your adoptive mom. We can do all three. That would be cool too. eh? Yes. Thank you so much for joining us, David. Where can people find the movie? I know it's in the movie theaters now. Yeah, but, it actually, so exciting news. It just got extended last night another week. Oh, awesome. And theaters have tripled their show times, and now they have matinee times on Sundays. So, and I heard you're number uh, seven in the box office, right? Your first yeah, weekend? Yeah, so top seven. Um, it depends on the night. I mean, on Tuesday night, we were top two. So uh, it just depends on the night. But people are, are going to see this movie in theaters more so than we ever thought. Um, so this movie is touching people. And I think if you go see it, everyone's going to love it. Awesome. And it will stream eventually. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, David. Thank you for your time. And thank you for listening. If you have an adoption story, you can email me at afallon at adoptionnowpodcast.com. We love connecting with you and hearing from you. And we hope you will join us next episode. <laughs>